greetings to all and welcome to the next video tutorial of the playlist abacus so basically if you have static analysis you can perform such analysis by using two steps or two procedure those are the linear perturbation scheme or general static step so today we will see what are the different between them and when general static step and linear perturbation scheme is used and can we get the same result by these two steps if you are getting different result why and some other important points so for that let me open the powerpoint presentation in which i summarize some important point from the abacus documentation so basically if i talk about the static step that is available in form of linear and non linear that's mean we can perform linear analysis and non linear analysis non linear means geometric material and contact non linearity so these all non linear analysis by using general static step i already explained in my previous videos to know more about non linear analysis in general static step you may have a look on that on other hand the linear perturbation scheme is available only for linear responses here you can't perform non linear analysis any type of non linear analysis you cannot perform here the general static step is available with abacus standard as well as with abacus explicit analysis but linear perturbation scheme is available only with abacus standard the third point is very very important here see the time of general static step is significant i will explain what is meaning for significant here and it play important role for the total simulation time on other hand linear perturbation scheme having very less time to perform analysis here i am talking about the step time not about the computation time okay so linear perturbation scheme is take around 1 10 is power minus 36 second it is approximate 0 second or in other word you can say the time is not significant for the linear perturbation scheme what it's mean see if you have one cantilever beam to perform analysis and here we are going to apply some load and assume that is the deformation so when i go for applying load and when deformation take place there is no significant time gap between those two things what it means this all things happen instantaneously let me explain those uh, two point here third point actually by one example see assume that we have three step to perform the complete simulation of the component or assembly the first step is general static step with time 2 second the second step is linear perturbation and third step is general static step of the 3 second see for the linear perturbation scheme i did not consider any time like i considered time for general static step here 2 second and here 3 second because we don't have time for the linear perturbation scheme so the total simulation time will be the analysis time of step 1 plus step 2 and plus step 3 okay here so we can see here the total time will be first step time second step time that is linear perturbation scheme that is zero and for the third step that is the 3 second so total step time for the simulation is 5 second hope now you get a clear idea that linear perturbation scheme is instantaneous procedure here we are not going to consider step time okay come to the next slide so now question is that if we are going to perform static analysis whatever step we are using either the general static step or uh, linear perturbation step why we need time in the general static step see here time is only for the reference purpose okay what it means if you have one variable load likewise so to define that variable load you need a reference so what reference you can decide here Yeah, time is the physical entity that we can define as a reference for the x-axis. Means now you are able to define your variable load with respect to the time. So now you understand why we have time as a reference in general static step. And as I told you, in linear perturbation scheme, there is no time gap between applied force and deformation take place. So 
there is no meaning of time okay and here you cannot apply variable load so let me continue on the fourth point okay general static step used to apply load pressure or any type of boundary uh, condition for which deformation is take place and uh, linear contribution is generally used to perform stability check or extract natural frequencies etc again the fifth point is very very important here in general static step step 1 output can be input for the another step or next step but in the linear contribution scheme if you have multiple linear contribution uh, steps uh, the result will not export for the second step so whatever the result you are getting from the first step first linear contribution step and again if you have some another step either that may be linear contribution or that may be general static it will consider the original model and initial boundary conditions but it will not consider the linear contribution step analysis result here one more important point even if you have linear contribution scheme in between two general static step okay the the above statement is unaltered what it means so let me explain this by example you have here four steps the first step is pretension what it means we are going to apply some constraint and some load and then going to find some natural frequencies and again we are going to increase the load or we can say increase the pretension and we are going to find the natural frequencies see after first we are going to perform the linear contribution analysis but whatever result we have for the linear contribution analysis those effect will not consider for the third step okay the third step will consider results from the first step but it will not consider results from the second step okay so after pretension or we can say increasing the pretension load again we are going to find the natural frequencies and we are getting some different natural frequencies so that's mean whatever linear contribution scheme we have in between two general static step that's effect will not consider okay so this example is nothing but a violin string example so one end is fixed and uh, other end is uh, roller constraint with some pretension load we will see one example on it last two important point load and boundary conditions are generalized for the general static step what it means whatever the loads you are going to define for the static step first the same boundary conditions you can propagate for the second step and third step and so on but here you cannot the last point the general static step you can consider red dependent material here you have red dependent material but you cannot consider here time dependent material time dependent means creep and swelling but red dependent material like plasticity hyperelastic behavior for like rubber rubber material and so on so those things you can consider and here neither red dependent nor time dependent material you can consider for the linear contribution scheme okay So after considering this all points from the abacus documentation we are going to take one example this example is also available in abacus benchmark this this example is same string actually the string that i told you in this uh, violin and here we have fixed condition and at other end we have roller condition this is not actually here this is somewhere here okay and we are going to tense this string when i go for tense that string the sound produced by the string is depend on its natural frequencies so we are going to find the natural frequencies by using linear contribution and general static step so this is the condition and let me show you uh, the same things in abacus benchmark let's discuss so here you can see we have one example for vibration of cable under tension so for that we are using general static and linear contribution scheme so this is the force value and uh, the element type that is juice is truss to the type of element yeah of course we can perform this analysis by beam element also but here the truss elements are used so we are also going to use the truss element 2d truss element and 
and uh, at the last we have some important detail like cross sectional area young's modulus density and preload or you can say static load condition and these are the experimentation result by thomson in 1965 and these are the abacus result so let me open the abacus and let me cancel these all things i am going to open a new model go for here part so i'm going to create one part just go for click on part part okay as i told you they used 2d truss elements so we are also going to use here 2d planar deformable component and that is the wire okay because we are going to model only one string so we are taking here wire and the length of that wire is around 2.54 meter so approximate size for the canvas is 10 is sufficient just go for here line options the first point 0 comma 0 and second point we are going to def define as 2.54 comma 0 okay my line is created just go for exit the sketch let me save my model save as 05 string example also set the working directory file set working directory and send that folder go for okay okay so once a string geometry is prepared go for here properties material create one material any name you can define i am defining here as steel general density so now unit is in mks meter kilogram second so the unit here for the density 7800 exactly the unit density is 701 so 7801 and mechanical elastic elastic yang's modulus will be 206.84 gigapascal e raised to power 9 and the poisson ratio are considered as zero for the string condition because we are considering approximate there is no lateral deformation go for okay go for create a section just go for create see in the beam we have truss options by default you are in the solid just go for beam truss continue the cross sectional area that is also given here the cross sectional area is 1.979 that is mm square okay so here i'm going to define 1.979 e raised to the power minus 6 that will be in meter square just go for dismiss assign the section select the truss So don't want to create a set. Just uncheck this and go for done. Okay. So section is assigned. After defining the section, you have to go for assembly. Go for assembly instance. Independent instance. I'm going to create. Then go for step. Go for creating step. See, the initial step is already created for the initial loading condition. If you have. and here i'm going to create two steps first step is for pretension load like uh, you have one static load here and uh, after that pretension load we are going to finding the natural frequencies by linear perturbation scheme so first i'm going to create general static step step 1 i'm not going to rename go for increment increment size initial increment size i'm going to define point 1 and maximum also point when general static step is created then i am going to create a linear perturbation step linear perturbation and here you have frequency just go for click on continue so lenkos method i am going to use and subspace and ams method also available for finding natural frequencies we will talk on those things 
in separate video so here just click on value and how much natural frequency you want to extract so see in the example we have here four natural frequencies and we are going to compare those four natural frequencies with respect to the exact method so just go for here four natural frequencies and click on ok dismiss after defining state you have to go for defining the boundary conditions so first i am going to define constraint and just click on create instead of step 2 i am going to create initial constraint and initial state and caster is continue and select this point precisely not this line i am going to create a set and set name as fix constraint click on done and caster ok again i am going to create another constraint here that is the roller support go for create go for displacement rotation continue rename as roller and select that point precisely click on done see the roller support that's mean we are going to allow the translation along x axis only okay so i'm going to constrain my y translation or rotation along z just click on ok and go for displays go for load i am going to define the load go for create here so instead of initial step i am going to create load for the general static step so step one is my general static step and what type of load we have mechanical concentrate force we have continue and select same node so i'm not going to create a another set just click on set here and the roller point this same point will be select here and we are going to define load so the load value is also given that is 2224.0 in x direction in x direction 2224.0 and click on ok just go for dismiss here so after defining the load conditions you have to go for mess the geometry element type abacus standard linear element i want to decide and truss type of element i want to design either you can use your beam element also okay so trusses element and see here t2 d2 click on ok seating i'm going to define so by default the size is 0.25 i'm going to define the 0.1 apply and okay now go for mesh click on yes so now beam is meshed and here go for create a job create job one cell model in parallelization you can define number of core for the multiple process click on ok so after creating job just click on submit and let complete the solution just you can monitor the solution here we are getting one error message uh, that may be we are not defined the non-linearity geometric non-linearity modify the simulation step go for step here yeah we are not defined the non-linear geometry it is recommended to use non-linear geometry for the or general static step if you are finding the natural frequency so just hit on the non-linear geometry check on this automatically both will be checked on just go for dismiss again again go for job here save the file and go for submit and again go for monitor see the step first is completed and this one is the step second so job is successfully completed and go for show the results click on the results go for deform mode and by default it is representing results for the 
the second step and that is the linear perturbation step if you want to change the frame or you can say mode shapes uh, you have two method you can expand this uh, steps and under step you have to go for frame first frame second and frame third and here you are getting the values okay and the another thing you have here the result and step and frame options and here you are getting step first and step second for step second we are getting five modes and those are the frequencies so let me compare those results from the abacus benchmark see the exact result is uh, for first extraction natural frequency extraction is 74.7 .7 and here you have 74.46 very close and the second one is 149 third one is 224 so here also we are very close 148 point some, something 222.21 and the fourth frequency 299 and here also we are getting 294 as we are moving toward the higher mode shapes the error will be increased okay even we are getting better result from the abacus benchmark see here we have 287 and here we are getting 294 okay so let me simulate i just go for here cancel and go for here harmonic mode okay by default it is in string options sometime it is in loop options likewise okay so just click on string and you can adjust the speed of the simulation go for ok so this is the second frame just double click on the third frame this is the third frame and fourth frame okay this is the fourth frame so here the important point is the step one result will affect the natural frequencies which we are extracted in step two so step one is our general static step and step 2 is linear perturbation step if we did it reverse like uh, we first go for create a linear perturbation step for the natural frequency extraction and then we are going to perform the general static step so result obviously will be different uh, there is no meaning of such extraction of the natural frequencies see in the first step we defined the pretensioning condition okay that pretensioning condition is used as an input for the second step but if you go for define the step 2 initially or you can say linear perturbation scheme initially so there will be no pretension condition the beam will be free for such cases first six mode steps we are getting as a zero mode step so hope you are getting a clear idea of linear perturbation and general static step what are the difference between them and when to use linear perturbation and general static step apart from i want to give a task to you see here this is my analysis condition and if we are going to perform this analysis using linear perturbation step in the first step we have linear perturbation static analysis and in the second step we have linear perturbation normal mode analysis or you can say frequency analysis where we are going to find out the natural frequencies so will it work if it is work it's good if it is not work you will get an answer in this video itself the another important thing if i if i go for perform the same simulation by using linear perturbation scheme and again we are going to model the same behavior and we perform the second analysis using general static analysis sorry step so what will be the difference between them okay so these two things you have to find out and if you are getting any difficulty uh, you can comment me or you can message me also you can leave a message in my whatsapp group that i created the whatsapp group link is available in the descriptions for the abacus benchmark also i provide link from where you can get a help for this particular example not only for this example you will get number of analysis there or benchmarks there you can use those benchmark to perform simulations so thank you all thank you for listening